Welcome to SlideBase. SlideBase uses sliders to select genes and other features with user customizable expression thresholds. There are many Atlas-like resources which profile the expression of, for instance, genes across different tissues. Whilst these atlases are powerful datasets for understanding human biology and disease, the navigation of such vast datasets is difficult for many users. We have found that there is a lack of intuitive methods for selection of, say, genes specifically used in particular tissues and cell types of interest. In this video, I will first walk you through the main resources within SlideBase and then use the Phantom 5 Enhancer and Promoter Atlases as examples for the utility of our tool. Lastly, I will highlight the differences between the various resources within SlideBase. The SlideBase homepage outlines the different types of gene expression data resources that we can use as a basis for selection. We include five different types of datasets. The Human Protein Atlas enables selection of genes based on either RNA-Seq gene expression or protein abundance in tissues across the human body. The BioGPS Expression Atlas enables gene selection based on microarray expression data across a wide range of human cells and tissues. The Phantom Promoter Atlas enables the selection of promoters based on cage expression across human primary cells and tissues. Similarly, the Phantom 5 microRNA expression atlas enables selection of microRNAs across many human primary cells based on small RNA sequencing. Finally, the Phantom Enhancer atlas enables selecting enhancers based on their activity in the same tissues and primary cells as the promoter atlas above. We will now go through a usage example of SlideBase showcasing the Enhancer database. You should note that all the SlideBase resources are quite similar in their layout and capabilities. Before we dive into the usage example, let's explore some background research on the Phantom project with an emphasis on enhancers. You can view the Phantom research video by clicking the annotation. We also provide a link in the description below. I will now show you some user scenarios for enhancer selection in SlideBase. On the enhancer homepage, we click on the Human Enhancers selector. This is the main enhancer search page there are over 32,000 enhancers. This number will change as we define our search constraints. As presented in the background for search video, we can define constraints like at least 30% of total expression from this enhancer should come from, for example, brain. We use sliders to define such constraints. We can observe that we have two panels of sliders. The left panel contains the primary cell samples and the right panel contains the organ or tissue samples. Both panels influence the resulting enhancers, but their sliders are independent. In both panels, we can set the sliders to at most 100%. What this means is that, for example, in the organ panel, if we set the constraints to at least approximately 30% for brain, we cannot have more than 70% for eye. Notice how when we change the brain and eye slider values, the resulting number of enhancers immediately changes too. In the case of I, we cannot increase more than 70% because we have reached 100%. However, we can still add negative sample selection on any of our tissues. Additionally, we are free to set other constraints for primary cells even if we have reached 100% for tissue. In both panels, we can set the sliders to at most 100%. One can observe the remaining percentage indicators. Of course, in this case, we have been too restrictive in our search and there are no enhancers that qualify. So let's reset our cells and organ sliders and show a use case scenario. Suppose we are interested in blood and we want to have both white blood cells and red blood cells. We will use neutrophils for white blood cells and reticulocytes for red blood cells. We will set the expression values to at least 40% for both neutrophils and reticulocytes. We only obtain one enhancer and we would like to have more than one. So let's decrease the slider values to at least 20% for both primary cells. In addition, we want to have most of the tissue expression from blood, say at least 80%. Now, this search results in three enhancers. We could also have used negative selection and search by genomic location, but we will show this in the promoter case. We can see more information about our three enhancers by clicking on the See Detailed Results link. We are now on the results viewer page. On the left side, we have the list of found enhancers, in our case, three. Given that we have searched for blood and blood cells related enhancers, we will describe the results page while at the same time analyzing the first of the three enhancers. 
For each individual enhancer in the list, we display related information and available actions in the tabbed panel. In the first tab, we have expression related information. In the case of cells, 40% of expression originates from reticulocytes and 40% from neutrophils, along with other immune related cells. As specified in our search, we see that most of the organ expression comes from blood. In the second tab, we have the option of viewing our enhancer as a track in the UCSC Genome Browser. We will keep the default values for the enhancer track and click on the View button. In the UCSC Genome Browser, we recognise some of the enhancer properties specified before. H3K4 monomethylation and H3K27 acetylation marks, but not H3K4 trimethylation marks. DNA is sensitive. A number of chip transcription factor peaks. It is also slightly conserved. Since we are looking at Phantom 5 enhancers, they have already been defined to have bidirectional cage peaks. In addition, the enhancer is located on the intron of the IL-12 RB1 gene that binds interleukin-12, which is part of the immune response. This is good to have since our search included blood tissue and neutrophils, and the enhancer was expressed in a number of different white blood cells. If we move to the last tab, we can see if the enhancer expression is correlated with promoter expression over the cell and tissue samples. We can observe that the enhancer correlates with the number of anonymous Phantom 5 promoters, along with the Phantom 5 promoters associated with known genes. It is good to see that an IL-12 RB1 associated promoter also correlates with the enhancer. Among others, we can see the JAK3 gene, which is predominantly expressed in immune cells. In section 3, we can check if there are any SNPs overlapping enhancers. In this case, we have a number of SNPs for which we can view more details by clicking the links in the last column. If we move back to the second tab, we have the option of viewing the enhancer in the Phantom Zenbu Genome Browser, but we won't go into details about this. In addition to individual enhancers, we have the option of performing actions for all the resulting enhancers. We can download the enhancers as a bed file, view the enhancers in the UCSC Genome Browser, get the DNA for the enhancers, perform sequence motif discovery using MEME. This concludes the enhancer use case, and next we will move to the promoter selector. From the main SlideBase homepage, we can navigate to the human promoter selector. On the promoter homepage, we click on the human promoter selector. As we can observe, the promoter search page is almost identical to the enhancer one. The only difference is that we can input the strand of the promoters we are interested in, whereas for enhancers, we don't have strandedness. In the promoter case, we will search for promoter locations close to known genes. Suppose we are interested in the gene NeuroD1. As we are writing the gene name, we get suggestions for candidate genes. We select NeuroD1 from our gene suggestion list. By default, we extend the up and down stream locations by 100 kilobases. For our example, let's add 1000 bases downstream and 1000 bases upstream of the gene. We also require that not all expression originates from neurons, so we add a negative selection of at most 90% for neurons. In total, we get 9 promoters close to NeuroD1 with at most 90% neuron expression. We will also sort the promoters by their expression in neural stem cells. We click on the See Detailed Results link to view information about the promoters. Similar to enhancers, we have the promoter list on the left and the tabbed panel on the right containing individual promoter information and available actions. In the case of promoters, we can also check if they are anonymous or associated with known genes. The promoter P1 at NeuroD1 is associated with the NeuroD1 gene. The promoter expression is related to brain and eye for both tissue and cell samples. Just as with enhancers, we can view the promoter in the UCSC and Zenbu genome browsers and check if there are any overlapping enhancers and SNPs. For all of the resulting promoters, we can download as bed files, view in the UCSC genome browser, get promoter sequences, and perform motif discovery using MEME. This concludes our promoter use case example. Next, we will briefly show the other three resources. From the main slide base homepage, we can also navigate to the Human MicroRNA Selector, Human Gene Selector from the BioGPS, and the Gene Selector from the Human Protein Atlas. We will start with the human microRNA selector. The human microRNA search page is structured in the same way as the human promoter selector, with the difference being that there is a single slider group which only contains primary cell samples. The human microRNA viewer page displays similar structure and functionality options to the human promoters. 
A notable difference is that the microRNA list contains name location identifiers for each microRNA rather than just the location based name. Next we will move on to the human gene selector based on a dataset from BioGPS. The BioGPS gene search page is structured in the same way as the human microRNA selector, with the difference being that there is no location based search. The BioGPS Gene Viewer page displays a list of resulting gene probe set pairs on the left along with gene expression information on the right. Compared to the Phantom dataset, the BioGPS results page displays less information and offers fewer options. This is because the emphasis was put on selection of genes rather than displaying data. A great deal of information can be viewed in BioGPS directly, to which we link from each result obtained. The Gene Report page from BioGPS displays detailed information about each gene resulted from our slide-based search. Finally, we will briefly take a look at the gene selector based on the Human Protein Atlas data, which we will call the Protein Atlas. The Protein Atlas search page is similar to the BioGPS selector, with the addition of protein abundance step sliders. For most samples, there is an RNA level slider and a protein level slider to filter by RNA expression and protein abundance. The Protein Atlas Gene Viewer page displays a list of resulting ensemble ID gene name pairs along with the gene RNA expression and protein levels information. Compared to the Phantom datasets, the Protein Atlas results page displays less information and offers fewer options. This is because the emphasis was put on selection of genes rather than displaying data. A great deal of information can be viewed on the Human Protein Atlas webpage, to which we link from each result obtained. The visualization tools at proteinatlas.org display detailed information about the genes resulted from our slide-based search. In conclusion, we have shown a few things we can do with slide-base. For more information, please visit our contact and documentation sections. Additionally, relevant links are included in the description of this video. Thank you for your interest in SlideBase.